Welcome back to the Algarve. Now the Tiger 660 Sport is an important bike both for Triumph and for me. Selling and reviewing Rockets and Panigales is all well and good, but what people really want, what they actually buy, are bikes like this. A budget of about eight to 11,000 euros, decent performance, practicality, fit and finish, reliability, and if at all possible, a zest of excitement. Now if you exclude scooters and 125s, the Triumph Trident 660 was the UK's second best-selling bike in 2021, behind only the seemingly untouchable BMW 1250GS, precisely because it ticks all the aforementioned boxes. And indeed, as regular viewers will know, I myself owned a Trident for the first half of last year, only choosing to sell it when the facelifted speed twin appeared on the scene. The bike I'm trying today, the new Tiger 660, is a sort of SUV version of the Trident. What the T-Rock is to the Golf or the Captur is to the Clio. So is it any good? I think we all know the specs by now, so I'm not going to spend much time on the numbers. What everyone wants to know, myself included, is what it's like to ride on the road. And is this the bike to go for over the Trident, or its closest competitor, the Yamaha Tracer 7? Let's find out. Flat footing both my feet is really not a problem, but as I'm 6 foot 1 or 187 centimetres tall, it rarely is on any bike to be honest. The standard seat height is a fairly lofty 835 millimetres, which is 5 millimetres more than the Honda CB500X I reviewed a couple of weeks ago, and the BMW F900XR I owned a couple of years ago for example. It's also 30 millimetres more than the Trident, and while you are helped by the seat being relatively narrow towards the tank, this is obviously something you will need to try out for yourself. I've always been a fan of the clean and crisp design of the TFT stroke LCD clock on the Trident. It contains all the information you need, including a simple turn-by-turn -turn navigation if you opt for the Bluetooth connectivity module, and perhaps more importantly, is also one of the most legible displays on the market today, even in bright sunlight. Triumph have carried the electronics over to the Tiger, and to all intents and purposes, the clock is pretty much identical. The only slight niggle I have is that they haven't been able to resist tweaking the graphics in an attempt to make it look more adventure I suppose, and it doesn't quite work. The unnecessary white lines detract from an otherwise clean layout of the Trident's clock and remind me of the dashboards we got in lowly spec cars in the 1980s where manufacturers would include lines and graphics to fill out the dials in a crude attempt to delude you into believing you were in a GLS trim rather than the base model you actually bought because you're a tight ass. Otherwise, as an ex-Trident owner, I feel immediately at home on the Tiger. The bars are slightly wider and pulled back towards the rider and all the switch gear is of good quality and positioned where it should be. The screen can be adjusted fairly easily with one hand while riding if necessary, although I found even the highest position a bit too low for me. Wind was deflected up to the top of my visor and forehead and it became quite uncomfortable when I took the bike on a short run on the motorway. Now you could argue that the Trident has no wind protection at all and that even a smallish windscreen is better than nothing and you'd be right. The problem is that whereas a naked bike, as it were, spreads the wind over your entire upper body, a small screen will concentrate the blast in a particular place. And more often than not, this is the top of your head, the worst place possible. Now there aren't many fast roads in the Algarve, so this isn't too much of a problem for me personally. But given that Triumph are pitching the Tiger as a sort of Trident GT, tall rounder I believe is the current buzzword, I think they should really have gone for a slightly bigger screen. I suppose you can always add an aftermarket deflector, but these always seem to fall right in my line of sight, and good ones can be quite expensive. Pulling off the Triumph Algarve forecourt just now, the memories of my Trident did come flooding back and I remembered why I'd bought one in the first place. Same noise, same low down torque, and same remarkably tractable engine. This really is a very accessible bike, at least if you're reasonably tall. Perhaps even more accessible than the Trident, thanks to the more upright riding position, improved leg room, and the fact that the suspension is slightly more compliant. 
The rear suspension gets a remote adjuster for preload and I did actually stop to increase this by two clicks during the test because I felt it was a little bit too soft for me and the balance between the relatively stiff front forks didn't sit well. It's okay when you're bimbling along but the factory preload setting on the rear needs dialing up just a smidge at least for my 86 kilos 13 and a half stone ish when pushing on and I can imagine that with a passenger and a bit of luggage again two things I rarely carry you would need to make full use of the adjustment range on offer. The seat itself seemed softer better sculpted and generally a little bit more comfortable than the one on the Trident although the highish lip meant I still couldn't shuffle backwards as far as I would have liked. I suppose I'm kind of used to the flat seat on my Speed Twin now. I'm pleased to report that Triumph have ditched the weird thick condom fabric they used on the Trident in favour of a more conventional feeling textured material which seems to offer just as much grip as the condom without the latter's propensity to pick up marks and stains. Unfortunately, we still get the same rear brake lever that looks as if it's been sourced from a Christmas cracker. At 206 kilos wet, the Tiger is a fairly hefty 17 kilos heavier than the Trident, but it's still pretty light for a tall rounder, especially as it's packing a relatively substantial 17 litre fuel tank, three more than the Trident, so there's an extra two kilos just in fuel. By way of comparison, the BMW F900XR I had a couple of years ago was 220 kilos, four kilos more than my podgy 1200cc speed twin, while the Yamaha Tracer 7, the Tiger's avowed main competitor, comes in at a very lithe 196 kilos. Given how down on power it is, the Honda CB500X's 199 kilos does begin to seem a little excessive. Numbers on paper are one thing, but more important is how the bike carries the weight. And I'm pleased to report that the Tiger's centre of mass is nice and low, where we like it. It's less top-heavy than it looks, and certainly less top-heavy than the CB500X. Hustling it round bends and roundabouts is made easy by the wide bars, although I did detect some worrying vibration and buzziness through the grips. Hmm... While obviously not quite as nimble as the Trident, the Tiger has a sportier feel, it, feel to it than the 500X and even the F900XR. The engine is a lot more sprightly than the Hondas too, although this is only to be expected with 60% more horsepower on tap. I'd forgotten just how smooth and usable this 660cc engine is, and often found myself thinking I was in third, for example, when I was actually in fourth. Such is the elasticity of the engine. As good as the Tracer 7? Well, maybe not quite as spirited as the Yamaha feels at higher speeds, but the Tiger slash Trident's maximum torque arrives 1000 RPM earlier than it does on the Tracer, and that makes a big difference in normal riding. The Tiger's brakes have been carried over from the Trident, and feel pretty much identical of course, despite having to slow down an extra 17 kilos. The front brakes could do with a little more initial bite, something I remedied on my Trident by fitting some EBC sintered pads, but the rear brake is remarkably effective, offering prodigious stopping power and overall the braking system is more than up to the job. Gear changes are very smooth, helped by a light but unadjustable clutch lever and of course you can and indeed should in my opinion opt for the truly excellent quick shifter. Now, nobody needs a quick shifter, but they are great fun, very addictive, and life is short. If you only get one option, get this. One glaring omission from the options list on a bike that purports to be a GT is, of course, the cruise control. I personally don't really have the need for one, as the roads down, down here don't lend themselves to maintaining a fixed speed. But I know that it is something that's going to put a lot of people off the Tiger 660. I know why Triumph don't offer one, it's because they forgot to integrate it into the Trident platform, meaning they would now have to start all over again from scratch, which is too expensive. Similarly priced competitors don't offer a cruise control either, but I think Triumph have missed a trick here. They could have really set this bike apart as being the only one in its class to offer a cruise control. Pity. Returning a minute to the brakes, the ABS seems to kick in quite early, especially at the rear, and the traction control can also be a little intrusive, 
I deactivated it and the bike felt liberated, especially when accelerating out of roundabouts. The windscreen, as I've mentioned, is okay, but as so often on modern bikes, is on the small side, presumably for aesthetic reasons. And on the subject of looks, seeing the bike in person was actually a pleasant surprise. When I saw the photos, I was a bit, yeah, it's nice enough, but a bit bland, almost like a generic Chinese bike, or like when Audi launched the new A4, and it's all just a bit underwhelming. But on seeing the bike parked up at the dealer, and then subsequently down at the beach here in Villamora, I thought to myself, hmm, yeah, maybe I actually do prefer it to the Trident. And I definitely think it looks better, sportier, than the larger Triumph Tigers. It looks more modern than its sibling's semi-retro design with its slim LED headlights and more conventionally mounted number plate. Triumph Algarve have also gone for, in my opinion, the best colour option, which helps. The blue paint really pops in the spring sunshine. The grey is a bit monochromatic and the red, although a nice colour in itself, comes with these slightly fussy graphics for which Triumph rather cheekily charge an extra 100 euros. So conclusion time, would I take the Tiger over a Trident? Yeah, probably. As a second bike for my group rides in the mountains, the Trident is sportier, good for a scratch, but the Tiger is more practical, more comfortable and retains 90% of the Trident's character. Seat height might be an issue for some though, so do watch out for that. Certainly when I got back on my very low slung speed twin for the ride home, it felt like straddling a skateboard in comparison. I'd also take the Tiger over the Tracer because it's got better equipment, a better clock despite Triumph scribbling on the side panels, and it's better finished. The engine isn't quite as sporty as the Yamaha's, but is this what people are after in a GT bike? And what about the Honda CB500X? Well, different price, different class really, isn't it? The Tiger makes sense as a bike for the slightly more experienced rider, a bike you would keep for a few years, whereas the Honda is more of a beginner's bike. So with that said, let's see how the Tiger stacks up on the Rocket Score. Styling. I never usually understand when people say something looks better in person than in photos. That just shouldn't be true, especially with today's camera technology. But with the Tiger, I think it is, especially with this blue paint sparkling in the sun. In my opinion, it's one of the best looking mid-sized GT bikes out there, beating even the larger Tigers, the Tracers, the CB500X and its Trident sibling. So I feel we can stretch to an 8 out of 10, as long as you get the blue and as long as it's sunny. Quality, well, the main components used are identical to those on the Trident, same tyres, brakes, gearbox, etc. Suspension gets a bit more travel, which is always good for comfort, but they've messed about with the clock and made it uglier than it needs to be, so I'll award the same 6 out of 10 I gave the Trident. Engine, again identical to the Trident, there's 17 kilos more weight to carry around, more if you add the luggage, but the low down torque deals with that without much difficulty, and you still get that lovely triple sound and brisk acceleration, especially above 6000 RPM, which I couldn't actually test here as the bike was brand new, but I'm basing the score on the Trident, 6 out of 10. Handling drops two points here compared to the Trident because it's taller and heavier and the suspension is set up on the soft side for improved comfort, which is perfectly normal for a bike in this class, 5 out of 10. Comfort, one point clawed back here, more room for your legs, more compliant ride, more upright position and a slightly more comfortable seat mean mile munching will come more easily to the Tiger, 7 out of 10. Brakes identical to those on the Trident, there's more weight to haul up of course, especially if you count on taking luggage or a passenger, but the brakes are up to the job so no worries there, 7 out of 10. Commuting, another point clawed back over the Trident thanks mainly to the Tiger's optional integrated panniers and top box, plus the more commanding riding position which is always a plus in traffic, 8 out of 10. Finally the grin factor, now this encompasses several intangibles like pride of ownership, fun in the twisties, and how much you just want to take the bike out for a ride. So, although inherently less fun than the Trident, I'm going to give it an identical 7 out of 10 simply because I like the way it looks, I'd be happy to have one in my garage, and I'd enjoy taking it up into the hills on group rides.
And so, unsurprisingly, if somewhat frustratingly, we end up with an identical total score to the Trident. Sorry about that, but it just depends which criteria you prioritise. Apologies also because there is now yet another Triumph in the top 10. I don't like this state of affairs any more than you do and intend doing something about it as soon as other dealers can get their 2022 bikes to me, hopefully in the next few weeks. I did genuinely enjoy my time with the Tiger 660, more than I thought I would actually. Regular viewers will know that I've ordered one of the bikes listed in my top 10 bikes for 2022 video and, in fact with a bit of luck, it could be here at the end of next week. And I can now confirm that it isn't the Tiger 660. Make no mistake, it's a great bike. And if I were in the market for a mid-size, do-it-all, sporty GT all-rounder, I probably would buy one. But I'm not, so I haven't. As always, thanks for watching.